Good morning. It's uh, Tuesday, September 15th. Welcome to the Market Geometry Morning Session. Uh, for those of you that pay corporate taxes, today's the day. Anyway, yesterday I spoke about troubles at J.P. Morgan. Can you speak about the lawsuit against J.P. Morgan by WAMU? Who will win? Uh, I don't have any inside information on that. It's a good question. I think that kind of depends a little bit. Oh, thank you, Mary. I think I think a little. Hi, good morning, Xi Jinping. I think uh, who wins depends a little bit on whether or not Jamie Dimon is in favor or out of favor. Um, I, I do have some insight about that, and I mentioned this briefly mm, uh, while we were doing premiere sessions, so it couldn't have been less than two months ago. Um, there are some federal people investigating Mr. Diamond or asking questions. That's a better. That's a better. I'm not saying he's under investigation. There are some people in Washington, not in the Obama administration, in the uh, I guess in the Treasury Department, asking official questions. If a uh, uh, if they decided to go hunting, so to speak. Uh, I would say at that point, uh, Wamu might got. But however, if they start to unravel any of this stuff, remember, uh, it might all be open <laughs> to unraveling. So, I don't know. We'll see. It will be interesting. Didn't the U.S. save AIG because of failure would have hurt foreign investors, including Chinese owners? I don't think so, Don. I think they say saved AIG because, again, um, even though it's not on the books for most of you to see, the main owner of AIG is. Can anybody tell me? No, well, now, yes, the U.S., but prior to the U.S. <laughs> uh, counterparty risk with Goldman, that's a good guess. The biggest owner. No, it's not a Chinese company. Uh, remember, these companies are nested, and it's often hard just so you know, it doesn't mean they're not a big investor. It, it's these, co these companies are nested, and what happens is some company owns something, and then they own a piece of it, and then that hurts. The da -da 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 -da. Um, David C. Teach says, "I heard that the government unions all had their money at AIG." Well, here, here's how here you know the largest investor of the company at the end of the rainbow is Warren Buffett. Now, if you pay attention to the day they bailed out AIG. You'll remember that Warren Buffett made some, for him, large amounts of investments in some companies that were just about to go under at some very good deals. Remember that? Also, he be went out and started banging the drum for, there's nothing to worry. This economy is turning around. This is the greatest time to invest in the history of the world. Everybody remember that? And of course, right. Right, he got 10% interest in Goldman. That's exactly right. Exactly right. So they gave, but he paid five bill for 10% of Goldman, which was a deal. So Warren has sold out in the past few years. Yes, yes, he has. And so basically, Warren didn't, knows that his end is, you know, relatively near. You don't live forever. And the problem is, he doesn't want to go out as the owner of AIG that goes bankrupt as the biggest failure because it would be much bigger than J.P. Morgan and Friends in the history of the United States. So they said, hey, this would be great. We have a spokesman. We have to save these people anyway, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, and they also, their insurers are the ones who do all the pension funds. That's right. So if you put it all together, that's why they, had, that's why they stepped in on AAG. Um, me, I wouldn't have saved one thing. Yes, it would have been absolute chaos, but um, I'm kind of, I believe I'm in the Phoenix theory, which is, uh, you know, let everything burn down. Oh, from the city of Chicago, remember, it burnt down, then they rebuilt everything. Then we ended up with nice, clear, big, wide streets that are all in a grid instead of tight, uh, shady streets that are crooked all over the place. So, you know, anyway. But, you know, I to each his own. Rome, yes. To each his own. Um, I wouldn't have saved anything. I think the Chinese are doing the right thing now with their financial institutions telling them, if you can't stand up on your own, good luck to you. Um, I'm going to start out with two real quick things. Uh... Uh, that go along with this, and uh, uh, then I'm going to ask an administrative question, then we'll go on to church real quick. Um, first, 
I support Austrian economics. Karen, yes, well, Austrian economics and also Milton Friedman is a laissez-faire or hands-free. He's my, he was my mentor. Um, hands-free or, um, you know. Yes, Magnus, I know you do. So Magnus supports Austrian economics. Yes, we. I mean, yeah, same thing as monetarists. We believe in free markets, hands off. Let the markets decide. Hands free is tough when you have voters to answer to. I, well, I don't disagree. But, you know, we were a country that used to be able to make the tough decisions. We aren't anymore. That's why we are not destined for a great future, I think. We're destined for Rocky. But anyway, um, here you go. This is from, you know how they say, uh, from the mouth of babes comes the uh, whatever, the most interesting thoughts. Or At dinner last night, the voters are eating the corn seeds. There you go. Pearls of wisdom. Thank you, Mary. This is from my daughter, Lucy. Well, I, you know, I, I, know, I know you've seen Vella the Snail, some of you, but Sean gets more of the, and I have a Sean story, too. Sean gets more of the talk here than Lucy. But at dinner last night, Lucy said to me, out of the blue, we were talking about something completely different. Dad... Do you think there'll ever be a Great Depression? And I said, Lucy, actually, I think we're in, you know, when you look back on this 20 years from now, darling, I think you'll know that we are in a Great Depression, and uh, I think you'll feel privileged. I hope you two both understand, I said to both of them, um, how lucky we are to have a nice house. Uh, Mom and Dad are home all the time. Um, you know, we we have food on the table. We go in to the food pantry, local food pantries. We give food to the firemen and the policemen here on a weekly basis uh, out of the garden. Um, and I said, you know, times are tough for a lot of people around here. This is a Great Depression, and uh, it's only going to get worse, and you should pay attention. And then she said the, the most incredible thing. Dad, this is a Great Depression? I said, yes, it is, darling. She said, I don't feel depressed. I just, I just, I thought that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I, I just like that. Anyway, yeah, she's, they're both very heady. It's cool, though, that a nine-year-old, you know, nine-year-old and ten-year-old to think about things. Now, here's the bad news. I haven't looked at all yet this morning. Um, Mr. Sean came home from school yesterday at, at uh, 1030, uh, ill, with a tummy ache. Um, he hasn't awake yet, so I, I, he, I think he was better by the evening, but hopefully it wasn't the uh, oil position turning on him. <laughs> but we'll find out as as we go. Last little uh, last little tidbit uh, before I ask you a question for uh, I think Mary wants me to ask this, but let me ask give you a tidbit. I did get uh, some emails. <laughs> Maybe Lucy is onto something. We just need to get every woman that's antidepressants. Not a bad idea, Paul. Well, we need to give them sleeping pills, I think, so they just don't do anything. But anyway. Um, I got some emails from some people. I remember yesterday's free day, so so we had a lot of people that don't aren't here on a regular basis and and are visiting. Um, I got some people that thought I was an Obama hater, just so you know, and said, you know, these things don't the things that you were talking about yesterday morning don't actually happen. I got three of them. Um, I don't know if they were the same same people with different email addresses or what. They were vaguely similar. Um, you just uh, don't like what Obama's doing because. You're anti-Obama. You're probably a Republican, or um, you don't know what goes on inside the administration, stuff like that. Doesn't bother me. It's okay. Um, I, I would remind everybody that I said before the, uh, and this you can go back and listen to the recordings on Traders Expo. It didn't doesn't matter who gets in for these four years. They're go, they're going to be in living hell uh, because you know these four years, you're never going to get anything passed. No matter what you do, you're going to be in quicksand. And the economy is just going to get worse and worse and worse. doesn't matter if you get uh, uh, our, our buddy uh, Obama or if you got uh, our Republican buddy. It doesn't matter. They're useless. Same thing, not that Jimmy Carter would have been a great president. He's a great man. Don't think he would have been a great president no matter what the, no matter what the situation. But he was a great man in a bad situation. No, it doesn't matter who was in. They were dead. That first four years, dead. Same thing here. That doesn't mean Obama can't get reelected. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying these first four years, the president is not is not the issue. Time is the issue. It's going to take time for these things to work out. Then how they work and how they intervene is going to depend how long it takes for all this to settle out and what the consequences are afterwards, whether we get massive inflation and all these other things. Now, 
Um, so I would also remind anybody that thinks I'm Obama or uh, McCain-ish. I'm old enough. I'm, I'm 51. Uh, any of you remember that there was a great SNL scandal where we pumped huge amounts of money into savings and loans? Yeah, of course you are. Some people are. Yeah, okay. And remember, uh, I don't know how many years afterwards it was. You read about it. Okay. Uh, Cont Continental Illinois, absolutely. And Penn Square, sure. Okay. Well, afterwards, remember, now it took quite a while, but afterwards, somebody said, you know, hey, where did all that money go? Remember that? Absolutely, Mary, Resolution Trust Company. Absolutely. Which is a lot like old clunkers for junk or whatever it's called, right? Um, I'm Canadian. Is it all right for me to think both candidates were are in, inadequate? Dallas, I, I would agree with you. Both are flawed. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Um, John McCain was one of the Keating Five. Anybody know the Keating Five were? You remember that? Yeah. He, the, yeah, the, the other four went to jail. He skated. So his hands, he's, he's known as a guy who always, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So, I don't, well, dirty, not dirty, you know. Hey, look, nobody's hands are clean in Washington. Let's, let's face it. That's my point. No one, not anyone, especially these days. It's getting worse and worse and worse because people that actually care wouldn't run. <laughs> um, so I, I'm not I'm not particularly Republican or Democratic. I want somebody who's going to get in there and actually knows what they're doing and do something. And my opinion was you could vote, you could flip a coin, doesn't matter. They're both dead. So in answer to those emails, I'm not Democratic or Republican. Then the last one was I don't know anything about uh, how the world works. I'll tell you a real quick story, then we'll get on the charts. Um, Mary, you'll love this. My car choice, Mary's choice, is a, is it a 66 fat? 66 beautiful vet. I had, when Jaguars were Jaguars, not Fords, I had an XJS V12, which means they take the XJS, then they send it back to the, the Jaguar Motor Works, take the top off, and put on a custom-made convertible top for you. Absolutely beautiful. Yes, it was absolutely magnificent, yeah. And and uh, Midnight Blue with that little nice flake in there. Now, I know, it, hang on, here's how it goes. Yeah, had one, there you go, Paul. Paul had one, Mary likes him, okay. So here we go. Everybody remember the big, not cell phones, but the... Uh, what did they call them? Uh, you had the big box phones that were connected around the world. Satellite phones. Weighed about, I don't know, 20 pounds. Oh, mine was actually magnificent, yeah. My car was reliable. Okay, so I had this, I had to, the bank made me carry this around even on the weekends. I had to carry it all the time. And I had one installed in the Jaguar. Yep, in the, in the suitcases, that's it. So here I am one day at Imperial Motors on the north side of Chicago. It's a Friday afternoon. My Jaguar's in the shop. Just getting, just getting an oil change. It's okay. You know, it was okay. But I had, you know, I had to get it done. And, uh, you know, it was a beautiful afternoon to put the top down, drove to Imperial Motors. I'm sitting there uh, relaxing. You know, they, they gave me something nice and cool to drink. And uh, got, the, got the satellite phone sitting next to me. And I don't know, they're about, they're about a half an hour and the phone rings. And it's my uh, my partner. I had a partner by the name of Dave Harvey. And the guy that I answered to was a guy by the name of Dave Vitale, who was number two at the bank, later became the president of what is now J.P. Morgan, and then also became the president of the Board of Trade later on. Dave Vitale was in, Dave Harvey was in Dave Vitale's office, and they said, hey, uh, when are you going to be done? We need you to get back here. we got a problem. I said, uh, I'm about 15 minutes away from being done. They said, we got a problem because we're looking for Stephen Wolf. Anybody know who Stephen Wolf is in history? Probably not, huh? Probably not. He was the president of United Airlines. And, which was a Chicago company, obviously. And they said, uh, yes, okay. And they said, uh, 
you know, at that point, First Chicago was the largest um, lender to United Airlines. They were hosting the meeting on Friday afternoon with all the major shareholders to try and figure out what in the hell they should do with United Airlines. Except for one thing. Stephen Wolf was not in attendance. So they wanted me to get back to the bank so that I could attend to the risk of the risk management while they went to the meeting and together and tried to figure out what to do. So I said, you mean Stephen Wolf from United Airlines? And Dave Harvey said, yeah. I said, he's sitting right next to me. And he goes, he's what? I said, he's sitting right next to me. He said, why would he be sitting right next to you? I said, he's got a car that he bought. He bought a 1933 Jaguar. And he's having to get flown in on a 747 so that they can rebuild it here at Imperial Motors. He's waiting for the flatbed truck to arrive. And they said, well, he was supposed to be at this meeting two hours ago. I said, well, he's sitting right next to me, literally. We're sitting there having a pop. And they said, well, put him on the phone. <laughs> so I, pa I go, Steve, it's for you. I pass the phone over. Not, not trying to be a smart ass. I said, oh, hey, it's for you. He looked at me like I was crazy. I said, no, really, it is for you. And they you know, talked to him on the phone, and he basically told them to grow, go screw themselves. He wasn't leaving until he saw his purchase. He didn't care what. He said, go, you go ahead and vote whatever you want. I don't care. Until I see my car, I'm not, I'm not leaving. And hung up on him. So I called him back. I said, what do you want me to do? They said, get your car finished and get back here. So 15 minutes later, I said goodbye to Stephen, got in my Jaguar, drove back to the bank, which probably took, I don't know, all of about 45 minutes, parked underneath the bank, went upstairs, and the rest is history. Two hours later, led by First Chicago, they unanimously voted without him there, United Airlines into bankruptcy. And the reason why they did it, they were going to actually vote to save him. They were so pissed off that he was cavalierly saying, well, I'm not coming to the meeting. You can just kiss my you-know-what, that they voted United Airlines into bankruptcy. And that was the end of Stephen Wolf because, as you remember, when they came out of bankruptcy, he ended up with the unions owning, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's odd. Yep, it's odd how weird little things sometimes, for example, like this thing with the Chinese and soy meal, tip the scales. Things on the margin. His car came first. Exactly right. I, I have to tell you. Oh, uh, Magnus, I'll tell you about it another time. Unintended consequences, yeah. It's, fu it's funny how the little things, though. Was this story ever published? Well, I'm actually doing a book for uh, Wiley and Sons um, called uh, The Wild Wild West of Foreign Exchange or something like that. But it's coming several books after what's coming out for you guys. There's no hurry on this one. It's a history book. It'll be in there. Don't believe me along with some really stuff from about intervention with the Fed and how crooked all that is. Now, now, that, the, uh, now that they can no longer sue me. Um, anyway, okay, so let's... <laughs> have I spoken to Wolf since? Well, we weren't friends. I didn't mean it that way. I just, ha I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Was he arrogant? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. He was like, <laughs> they're not going to do anything to me. Yeah, he was arrogant. A lot of people were at that period. So let's look at some charts. How about that? Euro uh, still trading. Now we're in 240s, and we talked about this. We're up at the upper end, unable to break through the upper end, starting to head lower. The question is, you know, what do you, do you want to deal with this median line? Let's squeeze it in. You got nothing. Let's let me put this out here as a ray. Extend the head. Let's make that. Well, that color's fine, actually. So we've got a we've got a ray in space out here. This is the end, um, as the doors would say. And uh, we ain't far away. So short of that, let's see where that comes in on the median line. I can imagine ourselves working our way up here and probably getting to this. This is one where you might wonder if I got long. Let's say you managed to get long here with a nice stop. If I got long, as you got up into this area, do you want to take some money off or at least make sure your risk is protected? 
because your yeah because your risk reward your dynamic risk reward has deteriorated probably at that point but second of all we might have a pause and you might find another area to get back in it's another way to think about it i'm not suggesting getting out because look i mean if we keep going this this leads right i think right to 165 but that being said if we're going to have trouble it's going to be either here or at the upper median line parallel so just straight formations let's do a quick uh what's one what's our one to one look like I'll do two because I don't think this is well hey that's not awful there's the 1.618 that's 147 and 65 versus 25 it's not awful and then we'll do our second one from here well I guess from there and again how about that same price any way you cut it So, a lot of trouble up in here. Probably not a bad place to grab profits. Now, the question is, do you want to buy at the median line? Do you want to buy at the sliding parallel? Um, I will look at the... Let me throw the 20 up. Oh, hang on a second. Then we'll go to bonds. Do-do-do. Hey, there we go. Oh, okay. So here we are. I have to refresh. Hang on. I don't trust anything these days. Okay, so here we are in the 20s. Uh, basic structure. We've rolled over now. Where are we headed? Well, certainly either the center, which would fulfill this balance line but probably down to the bottom end of this range um, let's look at the straight median line of the situation now if you do a sliding parallel you should be able to see that just dead dog easy as they say here's our I'll go by the first peak let me freeze that and open it up well, let's take a look you come up here, this closes above. Mm. I certainly would grab this one. You could sell at this first test, 146.34. Your stop would be less than 20 pips. This is a great sale. I wouldn't have sold this one. This is a great sale. Yeah, off the sliding parallel. Yep, very low risk. And that's that's why I would really like it. Now the question is, yeah, what about what about this? Is that your profit area? Would you take a profit right here? 145.86, so you're getting short at 146.34. Well, it's only 50 pips. You're risking 20 to make 50. I'm not playing unless we're getting down, unless I'm playing for this or down here. Now at this point, I'm break even and actually probably now right here. So my stop profit is 146.20. How about that? Yeah, it's midnight. I was asleep. Uh, this is cash euro. Michael. No, uh, somebody says, uh, what weakness did I see? Tom, Good. that's a great question. Here's what I see. I see ranginess. Uh, let me get a pen here. I see a test of tops. Let me straighten that out. Lower high, test of tops. But I see a, a range building up, and that's often a sign of a rounding top. Then the question would be, what's the size of the stop? If the stop, if this line has any frequency, and you can see it does have some frequency, if it's a very small stop at that point, then I'll play. Would left at, oh, at the double bottoms. Give me again, Chef. 
So there, is there a lot of weakness? No, there's ranginess, and you would like this and go, hey, look, I've got one, one drive to the top, two drives to the top. I'm selling the third drive to the top, and it may be a rounding top in a rangy market that probably is going to come back to the middle of the range because we've already broken back into the range. See it here? And good space below, yeah. Okay? So the only reason I would take it, possibly test the median line, absolutely, right down here. Yeah, sure. The only reason I'd take it, Tom, is because the stop, we've got lower highs, and the stop is so nice. And I, again, I would put that, people that are mentoring hear me say this all the time, or group mentoring. Oh, and by the way, Karen, are you here yet? If, um, if, you're, in, if you're in group mentoring or mentoring, Yes, this is Euro U U.S. dollar spot. That's correct, Michael. If you're in group mentoring or mentoring, you hear me say this all the time. One of the things you should put in your top five things you're looking at is, hey, what's the quality of the stop? If it's at the far end, in other words, if, you, if the max you're going to use is 30 pips, probably not going to take this trade. Okay, so Gerald says, what if it comes back to the median line, the sliding parallel now? Would you get short now? Here's my evaluation. It's making new lows, lower lows, lower highs. If it came back right now, I'd be getting short at 146.17. My stop could be, I'd, I'd have to use the Carlos rule, which is trade within your stop, to get the 10 pips. So I'd put a 15 pip stop on it. Absolutely. Why not? 145.75 double bottoms would take profit, Vincent says. 145.75. Okay. I have no problem. Right down here, you said. I have no problem with that. Look to the left, be right, as Murad would say. Uh, Mary, can I uh, can I can I give him a teaser about the possibility of uh, making contributions, or do you want me to wait? Um, Mary and I and Paul and Catlin and. Murad and Shane all kind of had the same idea at the same time, although I don't know if everybody was talking. I think the only person that wasn't talking was me. I was just sleeping. But in the last week, people have been talking, you know, all of us have been talking. I think we all came up with the same idea at the same time, which was, you know, it'd be really interesting. Yeah, we, we muted Carl, that's right. Um, it would be interesting if um, we had a, what's the right word? Gallery maybe is the wrong word. If we had a, a showcase where we could say, look, a hall of fame. Thank you, Mary. Um, and look, I'm a professional trader. It's easy to go look up my statistics if you know how to do it. And, and if anybody doubts that I am, that's fine. I don't really care. But whether or not I can trade is not the issue. The question is, Mary says it was Paul's idea. Okay. Okay. Um, the question is, I think that's much more important is, is the methodology I espouse and the thing that we look at every morning and the thing we do in uh, mentoring and group mentoring and uh, books and seminars and all those things, is it, a tra is it a teachable methodology? Is it useful to learn this stuff? Now, some of you obviously believe that. It would be really cool if we actually had some examples. How about that? So what we thought was, wouldn't it be interesting if we had people do some videos, some whatever, and show their pre-entries, their entries, whatever, and then have a monthly contest uh, to get in the Hall of Fame or at least a regular basis and examples of success. You know what? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And not only, not only just success, sometimes great money management and a losing trade would be great. How about that? So examples of why you do the trade, how you set it up, taking the trade, how you manage the trade, getting out, et cetera, et cetera. How about that? It's not even just for PR. It's for all of you because how about this? Could this be the start of crayontrading.com? Could be indeed, Mary. Absolutely. So anyway, um, Mary is going to put together of uh, market geometry is getting crowded. Yes, it is. Mary says that we're gonna we're gonna open up 
www. Ready? Crayontrading.com. Just so you know, we have crayon trading and crayon tra trader. We also, Paul, we also have fib dance. Anyway, um, it, we all, the other, so we'd like some ideas of what you and some examples. Start working on some example, boys and girls, because we'll do this quick. Second of all, what kind of nice things would you like? Would you would you like market geometry T-shirts? Would you like T-shirts or hats that say "Shift Happens" with the market geometry logo? Would you like uh, mugs, handmade mugs from one of our members who owns a glass blowing? He owns a glass blowing factory in England. Uh, we have somebody in Chicago actually that owns a uh, company that makes mugs. And you know, I mean, we have all kinds of interesting things we could do. Anyway. Shift happens. Karen, you are here. And by the way, the answer to your question, Karen, is slowing down the timing of one-on-one -on -one and adding group would be a great idea, and half the people in one-on-one -on -one do that exactly. So a Jaguar XJS to the winner. <laughs> yes, that's going to happen, David. <laughs> a chef says when Scotty made it through a professional trader level, it was very encouraging. I, I think that's exactly right. Would it be the same as posting to the forum? No, what you would do is you would submit it, and then three or four of us would take a look at it. We would probably put them all up in an area, but then at every X amount of time, we'd go, okay, take a look at this. This is our one, two, and three for the month. Not that we wouldn't show everybody's examples. We'd love to show everybody's examples. But we would make it dead dog easy, don't worry. We'll, we would, we'll do all the work. So people like that? Okay. So if you have any suggestions, Mary at marketgeometry.com or me or post on the forum. forum. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll post something this morning. Yep, I will. I'll, I'll post it. Then also, don't forget, before I forget, sorry, September 22nd, and I'm going to post that after we're done today, 10 a.m. free webcast. And you're going to see more of Murad's trades, by the way, uh, as well as some from Shane. And we've got a bunch of them. We just we want to make sure that we have an area worthy to put them up. How about that? Anyway, September 22nd, 10 a.m. Um, free webinar uh, sponsored by Infinity. Hopefully, every I'll put up the post to the link today. And uh, there we go. Hey, Matt, how are you? So, all right, let's. Uh, we've worked this one over. Possible long. Someone else is saying. You get the idea. Uh, let me do a quick look at, I haven't looked at Canada real quick, then I'll do bonds, then we'll go look and see if Mr. Sean has any reason to be ill over his recommendation to me. Where is my, there we go. Canada's still not breaking out. Don't know. Still undecided. All right, we'll leave it alone. Let's look at bonds. If it's not there, it's not there. Let it cook. We don't have force trades here. So here are bonds, and we talked about this yesterday. Are they going to fill the? I said they're going to start filling in the mountains. And here we go. Fill the first one. Fill the second one. Well, let me refresh. There we go. Uh, fill the first one. Had a hump up. Look at it fill nicely. Then spawned a lower mountain top. Fill that. It didn't hold. Now we've come down. Fill the second one. Now we're at the. This is the big zone here. This is the. Anybody got a name for this? Balance zone. I don't know. You could draw this either way. Um, and so I kind of. I started this, I can't remember who it was in mentoring, but it's a combination of Scott Bogan and somebody else. I can't remember. 10 a.m. Central. But I'll post it afterwards, after the thing this morning. 
it was it was Carl. No, it wasn't. Was it you, Carl? Base zone. CJ, was it you? Base zone. I like that. We'll put it, we'll put it we'll make it base zone for now and it was Carl, okay. So next time I mute you, Carl, you can say unmute me, you owe me one. How's that? <laughs> But basically, the idea is you can identify two really nice balance lines, and rather than, pu than choose them, just draw them both in there and go, look, this is going to be like a zone where you don't want to play. Unless unless you're short and it's come into this area. But you, you it's almost like a middle of a range. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to do anything in here unless you're short and it's got momentum. Well, this thing, this sucker looked like it's got momentum to me. To me, it looks like we're headed down to here, if not the Grand Canyon, right? It's a neutral zone. I don't think that captures it, Kirsten. It's a a DMZ, a demilitarized zone. That captures it, yes. There's a war on both sides. How's that? that yeah, I like that, Mary. Here. In fact, I like that so much. Oh, what the heck did I do? What did I do, Mary? Well, I know what to do. Here, file, workspace. Let's go to, we don't want to save it. Let's go to commodities. We'll open it up in a minute, and I'll redraw it in. But I like the military zone really good. Yeah, no man's land, ouch. See, I touched it, and you see what happened. It blew up, right? It's the edge of two planes. That's exactly right. All right, so let's take a look at Mr. Sean's. That's gold, by the way. So G20 is trying, as, as Paul and Andy pointed out, they're trying. Excuse me, they're trying to push gold down. It's in their interest at the moment. But we're nowhere near support or worrying, and uh, we might actually be. Doing a bit of turning here. You can do this. How about that? That work for you? I I traded most active months, and then I'm out of the way the week uh, when they roll. If you want to know, yes. So I'm circling this rascal right here. Everybody see where I put my A? I'll circle the A for you. Now, I may have a lot of drugs in me. I may be sleepy. I may have problems breathing. But I can see this without even drawing it. And this is what we talk about when we talk about some people. Murad, for example, some people look at his trading and say, He's not trading off of media lines. Yes, he is. He just has, hasn't put them on his chart. Some people can see if he actually drew them in. He's moving so fast because he's only got seven seconds between going to see somebody else because he's a professional during the day. He's moving so fast, he's, he can see him now, and he sees between the lines, so to speak. Same thing with me. A lot of times, especially when I'm on, so to speak, I can just see the lines. Sometimes I can see them and I can't draw them, and it makes me frustrated. Do the lower highs, raw highs warrant you to think it's possible failure, though, at the current uh, parallel? Well, Theo, here's the thing. We're back to quality of stops. Yes, I'm worried. But it's starting to take out highs now. It still looks like a cascade lower. I'm worried. But if I can get long at 997.70, my stop's 996.1. So if I put in a buck fifty stop, I might consider it. I could even, if I was doing this for a long-term trade... Uh, let's see, 997, 72 and a half would be 995 and change. I can't buy this, unfortunately. I'd love to be able to buy this pivot, but I can't. What I might do, what I might consider doing, if I thought that, Theo, here's what I would be doing if I was hunting. Put a sliding parallel on here and watch and see if price respects it. If price respects it, then I might be able to get long at 996 and a half. 
then I can afford two and a half bucks below, which would be below here and below here. That looks more like a hunting position to me. How's that? With a nice baseline at 997? No, okay. Just a thought. A shift from the 1014 high also is frequency. Okay, hang on. Uh, uh, with 1014 as the C high, Paul? As the A. A. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. It's like driving the car in a, in a mirror. There you go. Like that? So, this would lead me to believe, now that Paul and Theo have both pointed this out, point of decision coming, so that's exactly what I was going to say, Paul. Uh, I'm not sure I want to trade until the decision is made. Why bother? How about you, Paul? Unless the stop, yeah. I'm just going to let it, let it make its decision. Then I'll find it. So we'll mark this. Don't know. And let's see what we get. How's that? Do you remember uh, Tino DeAngelis had a shell game on soy oil? I didn't do indeed. J.B. Morgan at all are playing a big gold short. Yep. Uh, here. Yep. Well, I think J.P. Morgan and Barrick are in real trouble. Tom says, when will the decision be made? Well, we're talking about 1,350 tick bars, so it's kind of hard for me to tell you. We have less than a day. How about that? Or we have about a day at max for this to play out, it looks like. But if it gets real active, it could be slightly less, but this looks like about a day. The energy point, well, what happens here is is going to play the key. That's exactly right. Well, the people, somebody wants to know J.P. Morgan and who. J.P. Morgan and Barracks. Barracks is the arm, the gold arm of J.P. Morgan. And uh, they are in a lot of trouble. They have a, a huge short interest. Um, Andy, am I incorrect in saying it's about 20 to 25 percent, maybe a touch more of the open interest? Higher, Andy says. There you go. And uh, if I know they're, they have deliveries that were supposedly coming from the Chinese, and they ain't coming, let me just tell you. So they're trying to push, what they try and do is they try and push receipts around. Are they, Scott asked, Scott Bogan and asked me, are they also shorting silver? Andy, can you answer that? I cannot. No, open interest does not always mean shorts. It could be longs as well. Andy says they have bigger shorts in silver than they do gold. There you go. And those deliveries are not coming. The Chinese government, that's what started this whole thing with Obama and the Chinese government. The Chinese government has said they're not going to intervene. Good luck. Andy says the silver open interest is four times as large, just so you know. The short open interest. So we're talking about huge amounts of money. We're talking about Lehman-esque size of money, if it all, if the, if it all hits the fan. Obama tried to intervene and do a bit of bluffing, and the Chinese basically told him he was peeing in the wind. Go ahead and keep doing it. So this this silver and gold ain't coming. Now it's up to J.P. Morgan, Barracks, and friends to see if they can tap dance their way out of this. Best of luck to them. Because it's finally come to the point where the Chinese say, we don't. that's an interesting theory, but we really don't care. Duration of time, I don't know the answer, Ron. Uh, Andy, it's relatively quick or Obama wouldn't have uh, stepped in. But remember, they can roll things. If they can push the price down before a G7, G20 meeting, um, they can continue to roll this out unless somebody forces their hand. But Barrick's lifted a lot, of, a lot of their hedges. I mean, they're buying what they can. Barrick's, uh, it's not how it sounds. It's not B-A-R-R-A-C-K-S. It's not B-A-R-I-X either. It's uh, something weird like, Andy, do you remember? I, I don't know. I remember it's it's B-A-R-R-I-C-K-S. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you, CJ and Dallas both. The bet is the specs will capitulate. Well, I think it's, I wouldn't take that bet. How about you, Andy? Yeah, Andy wouldn't either. The symbol for barracks is ABX, David Selko says. Thank you, David. Um, I think, uh, here, here's another one, Mary. David, uh, no offense to you. I, I believe uh, J.P. Morgan and Barracks have their teat in a ringer, as my as my 91-year-old mother would say. Teat in a ringer. <laughs> it's going to take gold up here, I would think, yes. Um, what about exchange intervention? What about it? Uh, the Fed, let me, let me just tell you. The Fed, the Fed positions are no bigger than my positions for my the people I manage money for. They don't do much. Well, up she goes. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, in gold, you know, I was going to mention that actually. One of those old washing machines. That's right, Don. I can remember when we got our first washing, our first uh, dryer. Actually, I still remember the washing machine, the hand washing machine. But um, I have never seen. I have intervened in almost everything: Mexican debt, Argentinian debt. All kinds of weird markets for official uh, governments. But I have never intervened in the metals market, ever. And I've never actually seen anybody do it, as odd as that sounds. So that's why it was, like I said, I, was, I sat back like you guys with interest and watched Andy. Well, I, okay, copper there, no. Well, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen, I saw the Hound Brothers. What I mean is, I never physically did the intervention. See, I've intervened in the S&P markets. I've intervened in Mexican debt. I've, inter I've done the intervention in Argentinian debt for government officials and certainly any foreign exchange currency you can mention. But I I've never done any metal, and I've never sat next to anybody doing the actual physical intervention that is done. So that's why I was sitting back with great interest when Andy and, and Paul were talking because... Um, there's, there were Chinese doors, if you will, where I worked between myself, even when I was running risk management, uh, in the metals area. Yesterday, Obama said that there were signs that some of the old ways were coming back and that there would be no more bailouts. Hey, best of luck to you, buddy. You can't have it both ways. That's what I say. And I say that to him, Republican or Democratic. You know, you can stand there on Wall Street and say all you want. But how much did he give those banks? How much did he give those banks? Has Obama ever had bad news? Yeah, it seems like you know my. It seems like the newspapers pay, do a very interesting job of painting news in his favor. But let's see. Anyway, Paul says, and he he thinks decisions will be made in gold within the hour. We'll look at it starting to poke its way up. Everything's always rosy with him. Well, he's in his honeymoon period, but I'll tell you what, if he doesn't, he said personally, if he doesn't get health care or something passed by the end of the fall, he's dead. Mary says, why do people listen to these speeches? These people don't know what they say. That's why I don't listen to any of this stuff, Mary. My wife tells me what I need to know when she reads the paper while I play. I don't play World of Warcraft. I play something else completely inane while I drink my tea before this session. But she said, you know, what's going on with these guys? Look at what they do, not what they say. Exactly right. It's the same thing as trade what you see, not what you think. Exactly. The, Eduardo, you're exactly right. All right. So now let's look at Mr. Sean's oil trade and see if he has any reason to come home. Actions, not words. Absolutely. Wasn't that uh, Teddy Roosevelt? Uh, where's my oil? There we go. No. This is no reason to come home sick. Okay. When men were men, <laughs> somebody said, <laughs> and carried a big stick. I got a big cane now. Does that count? Do uh, you think we'll make it down here? Uh, how many people think we'll make it down to this mountain? Down to 67. Okay. I got one vote of confidence. Okay. How many people think we'll make it down to 65, down to this one? Okay. Possibly doesn't count. You you can say no. You can say yes. You can, or you can just not vote. 
okay, there you go. All right, so I'm getting a lot of yeses. How many people think we'll get the, a test? This is what I'm really interested in. How many think? How many people think we'll get a test of sixty bucks? Fifty-eight to sixty. No, no, tough. Not so sure. Here's the reason why. If we break this, I'll make sure I have a trailing stop on this hunting expedition. I wish my trading platform accepted a possibly trade. I like that, Paul. Test to 60. And the reason why is because 60 is the key. If we blow through 60, if the Chinese step out of the way and say, go ahead and let it go lower, then we go in a lot lower. If gold, J.P. Morgan blows, then price will fall because fear will cause the economy to stall. Well, that's one possibility. The other possibility is that people will buy all hard assets. We'll have to see how, we'll have to see how this all plays out. Yeah, I, I that's what I'm thinking, but I could be wrong. Only price is going to tell me. But the way I, Jamie Dimon's business. Oh, actually, there you go, Eduardo. There you go. What's the best way to screw Jamie Dimon? Not only get him in gold, but he's long oil. Push oil down. Don't buy any oil. <laughs> I like that. I really like that. And then and then when he pukes take it take it from him. I like that. I like that a lot. Um I I don't know how many tankers Jamie has, but I know they're Malta supposedly you can walk across the ocean at Malta right now with super tankers. Where will I put my stop if oil breaks out under your second from the top, Magnus? Um I'm hoping this will be a mini swing right here and we'll take this out. Somewhere in here we should f form a mini swing high then I can be trading with them at least with the markets money but I'll certainly be going to break even but I'd love to be somewhere down here or maybe even lower form a little cascade lower take these out then be down in here so that even if I'm wrong I can just take some money out of the market Higher lows and closed on high. Yeah, I'm not that worried about it. Remember, these are, you know, these are, uh, I mean, if, you, if, we, if we open this up. And these are hunting. It takes a long time for these to play out. If you get stopped out, eh, it's okay. I'm a, like I said, I'm about, in the hunting, it's about 50-50. You guys wanted to see, see me start to do some? Okay, we're in one. Now we'll see how it plays out. We'll see if we can manage it. Three mini drives to the, to the bottom. Could be a good time uh, to set up. Could be. I could also say one, two, three drives to the top, one, two, three drives to the bottom, basically inside of this parallel, and now we're waiting to either take this out, which would stop me out, or take this out, which would drive me to a stop profit. So we'll see how it plays out. I'm not worried. The nice, you know, the, the thing you have, in order to trade portfolio, positions effectively you have to not look at them very often and you have to actually get a stop and just you know um, I think I mentioned this yesterday let me point it out again when I hunt or fish I take these portfolio positions I will sometimes take what seems like a large amount of risk but I'll only take it If I don't get stopped out and then that bar closes and it closes nicely, which was on that one, which this one does here, when you get that nice close, then you collapse the risk. So I'll take the risk, but not a tremendous for a tremendous amount of time. So I will expose myself to a fairly large stop when I'm portfolio trading, but only for a relatively low amount of time once the position's on. For example, in the beans, a lot of time you'll see this. You'll get filled on a spike. You'll either then get blown out right away, which is okay, that's, that's part of the game, or it'll turn around and it'll close and it'll be nicely profitable. At that point, collapse the stop. You no longer risk that amount of money. That's part of the art, the money management art, not science. Okay, And, and hopefully you'll see that. I'm hoping you'll see some of that. you see me collapse a little bit, but hopefully we'll be able to collapse as we're playing with their money and be enough far enough away from the action that we can make informed decisions as we get down toward if it goes our way. We'll see. And paper trade along. Don't don't jump in just to jump in. Paper trade along. 
Um, if you're if you're not a long long term trader, don't do it just to do it. These are the lessons that J.P. Morgan don't know. Dallas, these are the lessons that the traders that used to work at trade J.P. Morgan knew, but they refused to pay us, so we all left. These this is a continuous chart. I'll chart on continuous and then trade. You know, real one. Okay. All right. So now uh, I got to look. Golly shucks, heck, I almost said a really bad word. Every time I have an idea in hogs, since taking, I took this one nice chunk out, then I wanted to get short up here, and of course it frustrated me. I was in the no trading zone. I wanted to get long around 45, but it already started its move back when I got back from uh, uh, Arizona looking at houses and whatever. And it's done nothing but march straight up. Now we've gone... 42 to 52 we've got our ten dollar range i'm thinking this is about it what do you think retail sales 2.7 versus 1.9 why is 10 bucks why 10 bucks um you know i talked about this this is like a biological cycle um here's what happens they take they buy baby hogs they grow them up so what they do is the guys that buy the hogs run the market because they are then the guys that sell the market. So sell the hogs. So they run them up, they buy them, then they run it up, then they sell the hogs as they mature, then they push them back down so that they can buy them lower, back and forth and back and forth. And it, basically when I hog trade, I want to get core PPI, 0.2 versus 0.1. Um, is the underslop on the red fork equal to the overshoot. It's not bad. Here, we don't need this line anymore, so let's just move it. Uh, that's a pretty that's a pretty good that's a pretty good catch. So so far hogs have eluded me. Um, I didn't see a setup that I mean we're here when I got back and it really didn't set up for me for a buy this actually looks almost like a corner trader a fib dance now we've turned on a dime um, let's what I'm gonna start to do is I'm gonna circle this area and put a question mark in it I'm wondering last I checked it is the fall did they mark them up so that when it falls because of swine flu worries as you're all getting your shots that it doesn't fall from 45 it falls from 55 how about that? Uh, somebody says, or Theo says, looks like a linear regression. Remember, linear regression lines are just the computer version of median lines or action reaction lines, although they have no predictive power from the in initial pivots, by the way. So, yeah, so they do look like linear regression lines, sure. Would I take a short? What I'm looking for now is I want I want price to come back in here and bunch up a bit, and uh, or I want a spike up that leaves me a, a very acceptable stop. Maybe even over here, take this high and this high. So let's see what we get. So we're stalking here, and now I'm I'm getting ready to maybe try a short. We'll see. Uh, what else is close? Let's look at, uh, where did you go? Beans? Novi beans? Pukey looking, huh? No, that's continuous. We don't want to look at that. Sorry. Novi beans, where are you? There we are. Sorry about that. And we're at decision day, or... We're plus or minus three to five days of decision day. We're right on the day now. So expect something to happen here in the beans. So far it hasn't happened. Remember, we've, we've the meal deb debacle is out of the way. But I think in the next three to five days, so by the end of next week, something's likely to happen. Um, the cycle for hogs and corn, um, I just have it from trading. I, I, you know, 
per personally. Yeah, this is a bad looking try. I think if it takes out uh, 8,800, we're going to, like I said, we're going to break into the 500 to 750 range. 450 to 750, like that. So I, if this breaks down below, I'll be looking for a short. But not in Novi, probably in March. So we'll wait. We'll stay with Novi because the harvest is on. But at some point, we'll just switch over to March, which is the crop coming out of the ground. Okay? It's old crop. This is new in the ground crop. March is this out of the ground. Can they buy a meal maker and buy soybeans? Yes, but they're not. And, and the reason why is because they thought they were coming. Here's, here's how the, here's they got screwed by the Chinese. They thought these deliveries were coming, and they found out on first notice day that the Chinese, which only gives you a week, that the Chinese weren't going to deliver. They were basically going to default. And it's not the Chinese, by the way. It's one institution, and the Chinese government said to the institution, so that's fine, we'll back your uh, decision, but you're going bankrupt. So, unlike us, they made their institution pay up. We, we've been giving handouts in America. The communists actually said, who loses? The CME or the farmers? Not the CME. The CME not. No. No. J.P. Morgan loses. There is a chance that the farmers lose, and that happened last year as well. If their grain elevator gets caught in the middle of this, and they're on one side of the hedge or the, another side of the hedge, one side, the wrong side of the hedge, there is a chance that they could actually not get their money for X amount of time. So they could be in trouble. But the CME not, is not even going to be. That's no problem. Yeah, some really, it was really sad last year. Some, some, some guys that made a lot of money in grains that hedged and did the right thing, their grain elevators went out of business. They ended up not getting their money. How about that? Wouldn't that be bad? If you sold your corn at uh, 7 bucks a bushel and then you found out you weren't getting your money? Uh, let's look at stocks real quick. It's already 7.30, and I'm, I'm starting to run out of huff and puff, as they say. All right, we voted on this one, um, although it was a different one. It must have been the 10,000. Was it the 10,000? No. There we go. Remember this? Yesterday? Now, the week is not over. Don't get antsy. You can't change your vote. It was about 2.5 to 1. Friday close would be lower. Then 10:30 Monday opening. Now we are a long ways away, but again, they like this manipulated news that came out this morning. I have no idea who's buying stocks. If the trades were cleared through the CME, why is the default allowed? Scotty McClendon wants to know. Um, The money is there. These are, oh, I'm sorry, they're not made through the CME. These are these are OTCs, first of all. If it was made through the CME, the CME, the clearinghouse would eat them. You're absolutely right, Scotty. These are OTCs, just like gold. But, yes, Dallas is right. CME isn't the backer, just the contract shuffler. But, but just so you know, if you trade through the CME and your the house on the other side goes bankrupt, you're absolutely right. The contract would be made good. That's right. But these are all OTC. Mark says, "I thought good news was bad for the markets." Yeah. I, well, I, I, I guess I, I don't know. I somebody's buying a lot of stocks, and whoever you are, good luck to you because you're making a lot of money. It's not me, but um, you know, I I've been pretty quiet about this the whole run up from. Um, six, uh, you know, 6,600 in the Dow all the way up to where we are. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do an interview next week, a uh, remote interview with Traders Expo because I'm not going in November, and uh, I'm I'm gonna be uh, less than quiet about it. Which is, in my here we are, we're bouncing at the uh, top of these highs, these higher these higher mountains. This ride's coming to an end. In fact, I hope I hope the markets pick up a little bit more, because the housing market in Chicago is actually getting a little bit uh, 
It's going to a little bit of a chubby. I think that's a technical term, Mary. Uh, they can have my house. Come and get it. The, the offer will be in. Please wait till my mother's house deals. Okay. Matt says he sees none. He sees no chubby. Oh, man. Matt, you're not making my day a good. See, I, I'm seeing a lot of people, uh, actually, to be honest, in my neighborhood. Um, and I'm not in a rich neighborhood. I'm at the, I try, I'm sitting, my, my house is basically, you know, cash. And, and we, we downsized when we had our kids. And the city is better than the burbs. Yeah, and I'm out in the burbs, right? Me too. I'm, I'm 45 minutes to the west. Um, but in my neighborhood, uh, the guy that builds the houses here went bankrupt. And he's, he's, he had about 10, spec, 10 houses that he was using as models and specs. And I think there's only one left now. And I think that was kind of holding the price down because he had just cut, cut it, cut them down to basically what he owed just get out of bankruptcy so Matt says great he's on the floor laughing lots of great technical terms today yes thank you and uh, so hopefully uh, hopefully you guys keep who, who, and no offense to anybody I don't mean you guys but I mean the people out there buying stocks keep buying them guys get all excited thank you take me out of this position which is you know yeah that's what's selling close to the bone well you know what when I put my house on the market, which is not going to be that long, it'll be close to the bone. My realtor won't like it, but I'll just tell them, hey, this is, tell me what you think it's worth. Okay, put it on the market 20% less, and they'll faint. Because <laughs> I, I don't, I want it to sell, I want somebody to walk in and go, yeah, I'll take this house. Well, the first thing I learned as a market maker was, if you don't like this price, wait till you see the next price. So if you want out, just get out. Yeah, Dallas Young says I heard I just heard it at work flip in six months. Yeah, we've been seeing those commercials in Chicago too. I need to sell my Canadian position. It's propping up the markets. There you go. The first loss is usually the smallest. That's right, Paul. If you don't like this price, wait till you see the next one. That's exactly right. I was taught that, and it was absolutely. And that's, I taught every single market maker trader that worked for me. That's the very first thing I thought I taught them. When you call you got to get a price, okay, Mary, put it in there. If you don't like this price, wait till you see the next one. If it's for time for you to take your loss, take it because you won't like the next price. No, I don't think the bear market's over. over. Yeah, Jennifer, Jennifer, who was a market maker, says that's so true. Yep. The people that freeze and go, oh, geez, I can't hit that bid. When they get the next bid, they throw up. And the next one's even worse after that. So the Dow, uh, you know, I, it's going to turn. Sorry. The longer we wait, the harder the pain's going to be. The more it's going to hurt. Because more and more people are buying into, okay, this is all going to be okay. And it's not. So, I here we go. Let me just. I, I Eduardo says he expects no no advance warning, just down fast suddenly. I think that's right. I think when it turns, it goes. That's 1931. Chef says I absolutely agree. And Mary, your book should be there tomorrow. Actually, Mary, let's make that one of the. Mary, let's make that one of the uh, things. How about this? Milton Friedman's. Uh, Nobel Prize winning, there's a condensed section that they put out in a separate book, which is what I sent you, which just deals with the Great Depression. Magnificent small book. Let, let's put that in the gift bag as well. Um, and, and I'm open to suggestions. So I'm going to post, here's what I'm going to post. I'm going to post um, the link to the webcast on the 22nd. I'm going to post a ba basically, uh, I should sign it. I don't know if I'm worthy of signing anything that Milton wrote, but um, I'll sign it and say market geometry. How about that? But And um, uh, you know, 
David, it's upstairs, but I just I just mailed Mary a copy. Mary, if if you ask in in the morning, Mary will tell you the the name of the copy because hers she gets hers. Where do I find the learning module videos? You go to the members, sign into the premium membership, then click on members page. And but I will tell you this: that's all changing in the next two days. It will be so simple by the end of the week. I, I hear to to uh, get around that you will have no problem. If you email me, Kirsten. I will send you the link. So anyway, I'll put up uh, the. I will put up the. Oh, David C says the string theory book is bargain basement at Barnes and Amazon for four bucks. That well, for four bucks, go get it. And Ron says he loved it. Okay, good. You know what? Let's put that in the gift bag, Mary. That woman is. A, it's, she's a wonderful writer. Two dollars and thirty-one cents, Michael Jackson is okay. All right, so I'll put in the uh, the description of the twenty-second uh, web webinar, the description of the October eighth webinar. I am not going to Traders Expo. I'll announce that as well. I'll make sure everybody knows that. I'll also give you a brief description of what Mary Paul and everybody else is talking about us doing the Hall of Fame, and then that will allow you guys all to make comments of a how you, what what you would like to see in it and how you know how it should be set up, and b what you like for rewards like you know. Shift happens on, I don't know if you guys like hats, shirts, mugs, whatever. Lesson three will be available as soon as I have enough breath, James, to, to actually do. The, the, the charts are all done. I actually have, enough, have to have enough breath to do it in one shot without wheezing. But it's coming. It'll, it should be there in the next day or so. So, that being said, Andy says, by the way, Andy has gone from being just a metal trader to now trading cash foreign exchange. He's in at 146.17 and out at 145.75. Thanks. I'm earning while I'm learning. Well, Andy, thank you. How about that? And a nice pop in gold. Well, there you go. Paul, you're prescient. Paul said it was about to be, and it was. So that being said, I'm I have to go upstairs and take some albuterol and uh, breathe better. I hope you guys had a great uh, session. I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day trading. I appreciate all the kind thoughts and for you being patient while I uh, repair myself, so to speak. Yes, I'm getting better, and uh, all of you do well. I'll see you soon tomorrow. It'll be here tomorrow before you know it. It'll be hump day. Have a great trading day. Take care. I'm Tim Morge, MarketGeometry.com. Have a good trading day.